Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and Elon Musk says Dogecoin is better for payments than any other cryptocurrency on the planet. Including XRP, of course, that means. XRP denied. And so I, I, I gotta talk about this because, look, I feel like, like, fine, people can have their own subjective opinions about whatever cryptocurrency they like for any number of reasons, and that's fine, but I feel like if you objectively look at, uh, at XRP, compare it to Doge, uh, it is undeniably true that it's superior specifically is uh, for anything having to do with payments. Because as it turns out, you can quantify certain aspects of the technology of Doge and XRP. And if you can quantify that, there can be a clear winner and a clear, clear loser in terms of what is better suited for a particular use case. Um, so anyway, I just think it's a fun topic for conversation. I just, it, it just, I continue to wonder though, why the hell Elon is all about Doge? It still doesn't functionally make sense. And, and that's why, like, I don't have a problem if he likes it. I'm just saying that it is not clear why he likes it and why he's pretending like it's the best thing since sliced bread, especially compared to like, so many other cryptocurrencies that are technologically superior. So I want to break some of this down seriously, but uh, no, XRP is the best cryptocurrency for payments, period. Um, and then there was this headline from you today, by the way. Uh, 61 million XRP transferred by major exchanges while XRP spikes to $1.34. And so uh, XRP, it's been rebounding a bit. It hit 134 yesterday, uh, went down a bit. It's now back up. I'll show you the price in just a second. Uh, but I love highlighting. I love highlighting articles with headlines like that. Like XRP is going all over the place. It is one of the most adopted cryptocurrencies on the entire planet. It's just about the only cryptocurrency that's used in enterprise-grade software. And technologically, uh, it just it, it crushes the competition. Um, I also want to cover this story from you today. Uh, it's titled, Biden reportedly chooses new CFTC chair to oversee crypto market. Now, this is important to XRP holders uh, because right now the CFTC is basically in a turf war with the SEC. And it's kind of fun to watch, but there are real world ramifications of this. So I want to share with you my thoughts on this. But um, I also do want to be clear, I do not have a, a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And so you should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I, I just make YouTube videos about crypto related stuff as a fun hobby, but that is all that it is. Just to be super duper clear, I don't want anyone to think I'm someone or something that I'm not. And so here you go, XRP at a buck 30 as I'm recording this. And uh, let me just say a few things. Let's talk about some differences between XRP and Doge. First, I want to talk about something that um, you can't code into it, which is liquidity. And so compare XRP and Doge liquidity. Uh, because currently, and you can see it on your screen right here, XRP is number six in market cap at the time of recording this. Doge is number seven in terms of market cap. Um, and you can see here's liquidity as, a, as reported by Livecoin Watch, $227 million. Uh, Dogecoin only $68 million. So uh, XRP, according to Live Coinwatch, more than three times as liquid. And so this is why I'm saying like real world adoption matters. You can't code liquidity into it. Like, the, the, when we're talking about liquidity, understand we're talking about the amount of XRP that is, is available for sale at any moment here. It's liquid. It's, it's for sale and exchange. Because understand, just because something's in circulation doesn't mean it's available for sale. It doesn't mean it's liquid. It just means that it's been issued. That, that, that's it. And so when you take when you consider the circulating supply of 46 billion XRP, it's actually a case that the vast majority of it is not for sale right now. The vast majority of it, it's being utilized by actual market participants. Uh, you know, uh, think about key partners working with Ripple, other developers, uh, also long term holders that just keep their XRP in cold storage. You know, because my, my XRP is, is it's not liquid for anybody out there. It's 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 being hold, held in my own uh, multiple wallets, actually. And, and so you have uh, then the market cap for XRP of, of just over $60 billion at the time of recording this. And the way that's calculated is you just take the circulating supply, which is about $46 billion, multiply it times the current market rate, which is buck thirty, and that's how you get to $60 billion. Uh, but that number, $60 billion, uh, most of it not liquid. It doesn't mean it's for sale on exchange. Again, according to Live Coin Watch here, it's on your screen, 223 million. So that's something that actually matters. And depending on your application, uh, you know what you're trying to do with a particular cryptocurrency will determine to what degree that matters. Now, in the in the place the uh, when positioning XRP or any cryptocurrency as a bridge currency, this is of paramount importance. And in fact, uh, liquidity, if you're going to position XRP or any cryptocurrency as a bridge, 
uh, which is what Ripple's doing uh, via on-demand liquidity, it turns out that liquidity is actually way more important than price. Now, we care about price. We're XRP holders. Of course we do. But in terms of positioning XRP as a bridge currency, liquidity is more important. And you might be asking why. Ah, glad you did. Good question. Uh, because consider this. I don't care if XRP is $1,000 to pick up like a crazy high numbers. Let's just say it's $1,000. If nobody's selling it on exchanges, then it can't be used as a bridge currency. So it would be better if, if, if there's not if it's not sufficiently liquid. I don't care if it's a thousand dollars because you can't use it for that that particular use case. Not effectively, that's for damn sure. Imagine if no one's selling it, then you can't use it at all. Uh, so the, but the market rate would be a thousand bucks because that's the last price it was sold at. Doesn't do you a damn bit of good though as a bridge currency, does it? Uh, but if you have a, a lower XRP price like we do have today, it's it's at a buck thirty. Uh, well, if you've got a ton of people selling it the world over, then you can still move it around and you can actually um, have a ton of corridors open. So to, the, the degree to which XRP is liquid actually matters more for Ripple's use case of XRP as a bridge currency via on-demand liquidity. Now, of course, again, I know you listening to this and me, uh, I care about the price being higher. I don't care. <laughs> like I care about liquidity a little bit, but like for me personally, the number that excites me more is the price, not the liquidity, right? Um, but uh, be, beyond that, you know, there's, there are technical attributes. And by the way, consider this. So Dogecoin, uh, it was created in only three hours. Did you know that? It was created in three hours because it's a modified copy of Bitcoin. They literally, and they, mind you, they, were, they, were cre they created Dogecoin as a joke, which is fine. I don't care. But uh, they basically, they literally took the, the, the Bitcoin code, which is obviously open source, and then they modified it a bit and, and renamed it Dogecoin. And so it took them about three hours and then it was finished. Now XRP and the XRP ledger on the other hand was built from the ground up uh, with a brand new consensus algorithm, uh, which eliminates you know, the wasteful mining and also added other features, including a decentralized exchange. And so um, pulling from memory, I think the, and you'd have to spot check, you'd have to like fact check me on this and that's fine. Uh, if I'm off, I'm off, but that's, I'm just acknowledging that. Now I think that technically the work started on the XRP ledger, November of 2011. And then it wasn't until June, early June 2012, the following year, that XRP itself was created. And then even then, there's a whole bunch more testing that went on for about another half year before it was it was finally all launched at that point. And so you can think, it, it, I believe it took over a year uh, to, to get a you know, final product here versus three hours with Dogecoin because there was nothing new or interesting about it effectively. They, they changed a few, tweaked a few things here and there, and, and that's what you got. Uh, XRP, though, again, uh, just a completely, a completely different idea for uh, for consensus algorithm. It was built from the ground up. And so uh, Doge takes about one minute to send versus XRP taking only three to five seconds. So let me, let me, this, let me just ask you, which one of those is better? Doge taking about a minute or XRP taking three to five seconds? Because these are things like you, you can quantify this stuff, right? These are things that matter for payments specifically. And... And Elon Musk thinks that Doge is the best cryptocurrency for payments. That doesn't compute to me, frankly. And so, and you know, I also, before recording, I found a recent Yahoo article. I think it was it's from some point in July, maybe the beginning part of July, I don't recall. But uh, the, the article is stating that uh, Doge transaction fees, uh, they cost one Doge per kilobyte of transaction data. And at the time, the article was written, that so I was like 24 cents. So think about that. 24 cents for a transaction. What? That's still a lot less than Bitcoin, sure. But that's way higher than the fractions of a penny that uh, XRP transfers cost. Fractions of a penny for an XRP transfer. In fact, here's a fun fact. You could send 30,000 XRP transactions before you'd even have to pay in total a single dollar in transfer fees. Whereas with Doge, you know, three or four, you're, you're there. You know, <laughs> depending on the price, right? <laughs> So it's, to me, it's just wacky stuff here, but take a look at the article titled, Elon Musk claims Dogecoin is strongest cryptocurrency when it comes to payments. <sighs> Verifiably not true, but anyway, here we go. Tesla CEO Elon Musk uh, has once again stressed that Dogecoin fulfills the properties of a means of payment in a better way than any other cryptocurrency. In a recent tweet, he channeled fellow billionaire Mark Cuban, who recently told CNBC, uh, make it that the meme cryptocurrency is the strongest medium of exchange because of its community. And here's a quote. The community for Doge is the strongest when it comes to using it as a medium of exchange. Well, look, nothing against the community, the, the Doge community itself. I'm sure there's actually a lot of you listening that do hold Doge or have at some point in the past. This is not an attack on Doge. I'm just saying 
first of all, in terms of payments, clearly XRP would be the winner. Uh, and in terms of, of community, uh, I would definitely put the XRP community up against the, the Doge community. And, and they do seem to have, in general, like a fine community, so this is not me disparaging them. Uh, I'm just saying that uh, the XRP community, of which I am a card-carrying member, uh, that's not a real thing, just in case you're new. That there is, <laughs> there's not, You can't be a card-carrying member of like a, 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 an organization for which there is no like central authority, <laughs> just to be clear here. But, but no, I, seriously, I, I, I'm proud of the XRP community. I think it's, just a, it's by and large just a bunch of good people. I put them up against any other crypto community, frankly here um and so that just again just none of this functionally computes to me so why is it does anybody know why elon musk has a position that he has because like i don't care if he agrees with me or doesn't that's it's fine you can think whatever he wants i'm just saying it doesn't compute here it really doesn't make sense <sighs> all right into this next piece now from you today biden reportedly chooses new cftc chair to oversee crypto market in what appears to be a long overdue appointment rostin bainan uh, Bainham will be named chair of the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission by President Joe Biden, according to an August 14th report by Bloomberg. Uh, uh, the top derivatives regulator has been rudderless since the departure of Heath Tarbert in January. Uh, Benham was appointed as the CFTC's acting chairman in January, but he's yet to be nominated, uh, let alone confirmed by the Senate. So his nomination is expected to be officially announced in the coming weeks, according to an anonymous source cited in the Bloomberg report. Um, so wouldn't be, won't be surprised to see that come to pass. But part of the reason that I wanted to highlight this on top of the fact that I cited at the outset, which is that there's a turf war between the SEC and the CFTC, um, there, there's this, and I find, I find this fascinating. Like it, it, it does matter what this individual's opinion is going to be about what constitutes a commodity versus a security. So to take a look at this article. Uh, this, this is from The Block. Uh, this article is from January 14th last year, 2020. And check this out. Uh, this is titled, It's unclear whether XRP is a security or commodity, says CFTC chairman. And so we're talking about Heath Tarbert, who, of course, is, you know, that's the position that's going to be filled. But this is the guy running the show at the CFTC at the time. And so it reads as follows. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, uh, Chairman Heath Tarbert has said that it is not clear yet whether XRP is a security or a commodity. Um, it's unclear. Stay tuned, I'd say, Tarbert told news outlet Cheddar on Monday, adding, part of the issue is that our jurisdiction we share with the SEC. If it's a security, it falls under their jurisdiction. If it's a commodity, it falls under ours. And so here's part of what I find so fascinating about this. It's the SEC is pretending, I don't think they believe this, but they are arguing that there has always been sufficient clarity surrounding what is or is not a security in the crypto space. And so that's why they're arguing Ripple and Brad and Chris, they all should have known what they were doing was wrong. But here you have the CFTC chairman working hand in hand with the SEC by his own admission to figure out whether or not SXRP is or is not a security. He's saying that it is not clear. So if you're Ripple, how are you supposed to uh, believe that you have certainty? How, are you, why, how would it be reasonable to, 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 to argue that Ripple had fair notice that what they were doing was wrong? Well, of course they didn't, which is a legal argument. The fair notice defense, that's a legal argument that has some serious teeth. And that's why I keep, I keep sharing this. Uh, and so, right, like this is more proof that the SEC uh, and, and, well, the CFTC, they weren't sure what to do about XRP at this particular juncture at time. As we know, again, Heath Tarbert, running the show, was working with the SEC. Uh, he's publicly stated that as well. And the truth of the matter is they didn't know yet. So that's why I'm saying, like, if justice is done, this is, like, it's kind of a slam dunk for Ripple, is it not? Like, anyway, you, you just tell me what you think, but uh, this is, whatever happens here, whoever fills this role, like, this is going to have consequences uh, for crypto and XRP and crypto moving forward. But I'll go ahead and wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.